So I won't tell you about the future of video advertising online. I'll tell you how to make money with video online by putting video advertising into it. What you see up on the screen is a screenshot uh, taken this week from our portal. We are <coughs> a video on demand portal cross device. We have been in business for six years. Head office is in Zurich, Switzerland. Switzerland's a tiny market for us, uh, maybe three, four percent of our turnover. Um, we are by number of users, by number of contents, and number of countries we serve. Uh, we're the leading European video on demand platform, and I was listening to Twiggle's presentation earlier. Clearly, they lead Russia, um, and we think we own a good part of of Western Europe where users are really moving away from f free TV fast and furiously. Comscore has us as a top 20 property in our lead markets, which is US, UK, Australia, and Germany. We have um, some 12,000 video items. Uh, you see a uh, Five and two don't really add up to 12. Uh, there's also some short form content that we have up on the platform. And we are right across all the devices. Uh, so Android, iOS, pre-installed on all the connected TV sets by the manufacturers. Um, and we're free with ads. So we used to have a transactional business model. We found that it's very hard to beat the pirates at their game, so we've gone completely free and we're basically about mid-tail content because that's the most profitable segment for us. Uh, the, the A content as it's called, the Hollywood blockbusters tend to be too expensive. They break the bank. Uh, so we look harder. Um, we try and identify uh, which contents really work with our audience. We have analytics in place. Um, and if you see uh, this, this screenshot, I don't know how, how well you can see it. This is taken from the portal with a tweet where a guy says, oh my God, Twitter have this specific anime content online. I may never leave my room again. Um, these are success stories we produce where we really zoom in on what do these people want to see, what don't they find elsewhere, and that's how we make money. Our market, um, there's a fundamental shift going on. We're really riding a big wave. Free TV is growing only in emerging markets and with old people. Um, young guys in the typical broadband markets are leaving free TV and cable TV by the hundreds, thousands, and the trend is very clear. Um, and we've now got this huge opportunity to make sure that a good portion of them wash up with us. Our users are young, they're 18 to 35. Um, the market growth is enormous. You've got the cake of TV advertising, that's $120 billion worldwide. So far, four billion have come into video advertising. And depending on which study you look at, everyone says, um, it's about 30%. This market grows. Every tiny bit that comes across from the TV budgets um, make our market much bigger, of course. And we think we're probably close to like a watershed moment. If you see um, in the US how many people are actually leaving cable providers, we think uh, the market growth might actually even accelerate further. And the one interesting thing you heard uh, the gentleman before me speak about programmatic advertising. Initially, everyone in our world, premium video said, oh my god, programmatic advertising is coming. Our CPMs, our prices are going to commoditize. And what we've actually found is, is the inverse to be true. We have grown our CPMs this year by 50%, and we almost see exclusively programmatic buys, whether it's through the trading desks of the agencies 
whether it's um, through DSPs, SSPs, we went into this timidly at the beginning of the year, uh, not knowing what to expect. We had a little showcase in Australia where we did a private marketplace with some media agencies and then soon found out, oh wow, we're picking up our CPMs uh, as opposed to lowering them. So this is really positive for us. And the name of the game in programmatic is really, do you have the right unique user for the advertiser at this point in time? So it all becomes an audience game. And don't worry about the targeting um, or the first party data. Basically, this is sorted out in the background by, by our customers. What have we done this year? I had the, the privilege of speaking last year, so I don't want to bore you um, telling you the same story. Um, we have focused heavily on acquiring TV series. Why? Two reasons. First of all, TV series are a great new way of storytelling. Uh, basically, it's swung from movies to TV series. And secondly, we've become a very KPI-focused company. We're about unique users and bringing them back to us. And with a TV series, we find that only 25% of users who hit the first episode will actually stay with this franchise. But if they stay with it, obviously, they come back for more and more. And we've got people asking, can you please uh, give us the second season? And we've come so far now during this year that we're already in the cycle of acquiring the second season for some of the series. We started to listen to our users, what they want. We've also done a couple of, of prominent deals. I said we're after mid-tail content. Uh, there's still big logos I'm putting up. There's um, Stars, Fremantle on this. Uh, we did a deal with uh, Shine, who are a Fox daughter. Um, but it's what we do in content sourcing is still very much uh, feels like gold mining, if, if you will. It's not taking the Chinese products. It's uh, what's not available on pirate platforms, what's not available on TV, and what still gets high social media traction that's attractive to us. And um, we did a lot of work on, on the tech side, also the, our tech team, uh, which is based out of Kiev, uh, where we have our largest office. They're the largest team in the company. Uh, we did a lot of uh, user experience work on all our front ends. That includes web, connected TV, and mobile. We're getting good traction. And we've managed this year as the, the best proof of how successful we are with this we've managed to increase our full content views, so a full episode or a full movie by 500%, which really means uh, we must be getting some things right. Our team has also grown. Uh, last year we were 24, we are, we're now uh, close to 50, and we're very spread out. Switzerland's by no means um, where we have our business. We just happened to start the company there six years ago. Um, apart from Kiev, we've got people in the US, in the UK, uh, we've got people in Germany, we've got uh, Australia, so we're, we're very much a spread out team, very modern, flat hierarchies, if, if you will, and we've established direct sales teams also. So if you're saying, uh, does that mean that we pick up a lot of direct campaigns from the agencies because agencies specifically want to be with Vuster. It's less like that. We do get those campaigns. We do get direct bookings. The CPMs are, are high and sweet when they come in. But to tell you the truth, uh, the site and the content, you've got to tick those boxes. And then it, it's all about delivering the right users at the right time, which Obviously, we're also getting better and better at And how we do it is we're not forcing everyone to come to our website, although that's obviously the flagship. We've built a big syndication network. And we've come from, at the beginning of this year, we were driving 20% of our turnover via our syndication network. We have increased that to literally half of our business. Because at some point, it becomes more efficient to, to find the, those unique users you're looking for 
outside the website rather than on the website. What's next for us? We want to have people uploading to us professionally. Uh, so that doesn't mean user-generated content. That's real movies and real TV shows. Uh, we are continuing to improve the social experience because that's what makes people come back. That's where we're, where we, we're clearly much better than, than TV. Uh, we have a direct back channel to our users. We want to do more and more marketing <coughs> to become a brand. I mean, being getting such strong traction in Europe is great, but now we've, we've got to build a brand and defend it. And uh, the loyal users we have, we listen to them, and thankfully they say, look, uh, we'll give you money if you can get rid of the advertising for us. So we'll start upselling into subscriptions as of next year, small ones, not to compete offensively with, uh, with Netflix and, the, and Love Film, the big boys. So as a takeaway, think of us as Hulu owns the US, Vicky.com owns Southeast Asia, and we're staking our claim to Europe. We are in a way closer to like one of those private TV companies starting in the late 70s, early 80s. We've still got to license in content, so we're not the internet pure play where the content generates itself. And we're a 30% EBITDA margin business, so by focusing on gold mining in, in content and listening to our users, we're managing to drive a healthy bottom line. This year will grow top line, or will have grown by the time the year is up by 50% over last year, so we're outgrowing the market very nicely. And we're fighting the big fight of, uh, of replacing the, the free TV boys. Thank you. <laughs>